Hello, uh, this is Richard with Janus Motorcycles, and I'm here today to walk you through the brand new Halcyon 450. Um, what you see in front of you right now is our prototype. So this is JM000. Um, and so some of the things you'll see on this um, may not be exactly like they will be on the production bike, but um, it will be very small changes, primarily some of the badging and the uh, things you can't even tell um, uh, from a distance may change um, for the production, production version. Uh, and there'll definitely be changes, uh, improvements. A lot of the stuff we're working on is just making sure that it's things that are, that are made for us with our logo on them, et cetera. So I'll start off by kind of talking a little bit how this bike differs from the, our current Halcyon, the Halcyon 250. Um, our goal with the, with the 450 has been to take all the best of the Halcyon uh, model and then add to that. So the first thing you'll notice is, um, well, it's a 450. <laughs> uh, this is the engine is a uh, engine, it's a single cylinder. It does have two headers. A lot of, we've seen some comments uh, online like, was oh, it a twin? No, it's not a twin. We're really in love with the thumper, uh, the single cylinder, uh, simple um, engines. And this is a great um, next step for us. Um, that said, it's a four valve uh, single. So that means it has two intake, two exhaust and two headers. And we decided to run those as two separate exhausts rather than two into one. The engine is a dry sump engine, meaning that the oil is stored in a, in a tank. It's an aluminum tank uh, behind the engine in front of the rear wheel. It has a oil cooler located behind the front fender. So it is air, air cooled, air and oil cooled, primarily air cooled, but that oil cooler up here was added by SWM when they bumped up this engine from its origins. SWM is an Italian motorcycle manufacturer. Originally founded in the 1970s, they specialized in off-road bikes um, and then unfortunately did go out of business for a number of years, but they were revived uh, about 10 years ago by a engineer, old engineer for Husqvarna. And they are currently manufactured in the old Husqvarna plant inside of Milan. Um, I had, it's been two years now since uh, we went and first visited their plant, got to meet their uh, team and test ride their bikes and see how the engines are, or the whole motorcycles are put together there. Uh, this engine is manufactured for SWM by Shinrei. Uh, Shinrei Group is one of the top Chinese engine manufacturers and they make this engine to SWM spec. This specific engine is based on the Honda XR400. The XR400 was a enduro uh, motorcycle manufactured by Honda through the early 2000s, and it has made a name for itself as one of the most reliable uh, motorcycles ever made. And this engine was one of the key parts that, 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 that made that bike so famous. It's a four valve overhead cam engine. Um, and it, unlike the the uh, original Honda design, this one uses a fuel injection system. So SWM, when they chose that engine, they improved it, they bumped it up from 400 cc to 445 cc's, and they handled some of the extra power um, and need for additional cooling by adding an oil cooler at the front and adding fuel injection, which allowed them to pass uh, Euro standards um, and was one of the reasons why we knew this would be a great choice for us um, in meeting uh, EPA and California specs. And they put it in three different of their models and it's gotten rave reviews in the countries where it's available, primarily uh, Europe and Australia. Um, and so far we've had uh, great, <laughs> great fortune with uh, all of our initial testing has been, um, we were actually passed the uh, EPA test without catalysts at all. <laughs> so um, we're off to the races with EPA and we'll ha have EPA certification in the coming months. So in terms of what that means for you, the, this engine is, our goal was really to make it highway capable. Uh, this bike is, we've taken it up over 90 miles an hour um, and it puts out around 30 horsepower. Uh, the engine puts out around 30 horsepower. Um, so it's uh, very lightweight. This bike um, weighs about 360 pounds, so it's about 100 pounds more than the, um, than the Halcyon 250, most of which is the increased engine size. As we went up to a larger bike, 
capable of higher speeds, more power, and um, we, we really wanted to focus on that comfort for the, for the rider. So the Halcyon 450 has rear suspension, um, unlike the 250. So what we, and rather than going with a simple kind of ubiquitous uh, trailing fork like most, um, like on our Griffin and Phoenix, we really wanted to capture the beauty of the, of the Halcyon and that, that, that geometry that makes it really distinctive looking. And so we kind of went back in history and looked through some of the different designs that have occurred over the years and, and been invented. And the one that really captured our imagination was the Vincent uh, cantilever suspension developed by Phil Vincent and with assistance by Phil Irving um, in the 20s or 30s. I think it was uh, 30s at first when they came out with their Rapide series. And it basically, it, it, it really, I don't know if you can see it here, but it, it mimics the look of the hardtail, but it, it has a, a pivot right here. Um, so the whole thing swings, and what we decided to do is, rather than going with like a monoshock suspension, like, which we explored, like a modern, many modern bikes, we went with that uh, Vincent design, which is uh, the shock absorbers up here. And instead of just doing one, we did two, like the Vincent. Um, so it's a paired set of uh, coilover shocks made by Icon Suspension, which they also happen to make <laughs> the shocks, if you wanted to buy some for your Vincent, they make them. So they're the right people to talk to about having this kind of suspension system developed. And um, we really feel like uh, we've, re we've really nailed the, the comfort of the Halcyon um, when it's paired with our leading link front suspension, um, which is also uh, the shocks are by Icon. So that front suspension is uh, almost identical to our 250 uh, suspension. Um, it actually shares the same shock absorber. Um, and those shocks just really, really work well with that. We did widen the forks um, to allow for the, our wider tires, or rims and, and wheels, um, which I will mention, the, these are 18 inch front and back, just like the 250. However, we've gone up to 2.15 inch uh, rims, which allows us to run a 3.5 inch tire in the front and a four inch in the back. So that's uh, um, still a lightweight, uh, narrow tire that's suitable for this lightweight bike but it really does give you more um, tire options and a uh, bigger contact patch. Uh, we've all been really impressed with the um, grip and the, just the stability of this, of this model. Uh, the tires are uh, Duros. Actually, these are um, wonderful, a wonderful pattern that, that kind of gives you a little bit more of, the, of a uh, aggressive tread, but without the um, disadvantage of road noise and um, vibration that sometimes you get with like a knobby type tire. So we really feel like this is a fantastic kind of middle of the road tire that also looks really good on the Halcyon. So we went to and spoke with the experts at Sargent. Uh, Sargent is one of probably, if not the best, um, one of the two top best uh, uh, um, aftermarket seat manufacturers in the country. Um, and we've been working with them for uh, months now on a seat, which is not on the prototype here, but it's a um, a fully upholstered seat using their proprietary foam technology um, and an upholstered seat. And we'll be able to probably do a lot of really neat things with how that's upholstered, um, different stitch patterns, et cetera. So we're really looking forward to that. So apart from the increased capacity of the engine, the frame, uh, forks, obviously the rear suspension have all been redesigned um, and uh, beefed up both for performance and comfort, but also for assembly and maintenance and for ease of manufacturing. The 250 frames are one inch DOM tubing um, and this frame is inch and a quarter uh, DOM tubing. So that's all these have gone up a quarter inch. Um, we've also changed from the pure feather bed frame like we had on the, the 250 line to a modified version of that, um, which allows us to run the two headers. So. Uh, this is based on the XR400, and we actually looked at the XR400 when we started designing the frame and how they did it. So we have a single rectangular tube that comes down the front, um, and the headers go on, and that allows it to go between the two headers. Um, we've also addressed some um, areas in the frame that help with performance, um, and um, namely improving rigidity of the frame, and also assembly. One of the other aspects of the bike that we really wanted to improve was the brakes. So right from the beginning of this project, we have been in conversation with Brembo, um, which is 
an Italian brake manufacturer, probably one of the most famous brake manufacturers in the world, certainly some of the highest quality, used in um, many different industries, racing as well as automotive. Um, and we are using their uh, two-piston caliper in the front and a single piston in the back, just like on the 250, but they're increased in size. The front rotor is 280 millimeters. It's a twin piston caliper, and the rear is a single piston caliper um, with a uh, slightly smaller uh, rotor at the back. Uh, that paired with the increased tire width means this thing stops on a dime. <laughs> I can tell from experience, this is fantastic. I mean, we couldn't be more pleased with the, the feel of that. In addition to that, we are running, just like on the 250, Spiegler braided stainless steel brake lines, um, as well as uh, Brembo front and rear master cylinders. One of the other aspects of the bike that we are really excited about and that's kind of come about through the process of, of designing this bike is our fenders. Um, previously, all of our fenders have been roll formed, which is a industrial process that um, we have done up in Elkhart, about half an hour from here. Um, but as we got into this bike and we, really, we were really focusing on a very precise uh, size and width, we realized that we we're probably going to need to bring that process in-house. And we are extremely excited to be making our own fenders for the 450, starting with the 450 and uh, possibly moving on to the 250 as well. The fender process that we're using was developed by Joe Cooper of Cooper Smithing out on the West Coast over the last several, maybe 10 years. Um, and we are really excited to be bringing that process in-house. So we will be making the fenders. Um, it's a completely hand-formed process using uh, antique uh, machinery and, um, and you know it has a bead around the edge. I don't know if you can see here but it's a beautifully formed fender and it has a beaded edge which we've never been able to do with our roll forming process before. It makes a very rigid fender and one that really looks perfect for our motorcycle in addition to really fitting our whole process of hand making everything as close as possible. So it can't be much closer than doing it ourselves. Last of all, uh, on, for the 450, we've been focusing on the touch and feel of the bike. So we've talked about the rear suspension, we've talked about the increased power, we've talked about the seat, but also the things that you interact with most, your instrumentation, brake, levers, controls, switches. So we're using um, our latest uh, switch gear, as well as new uh, speedometer and a tachometer. So on the 250 we only had the speedometer, it was a 48 millimeter unit. Um, we have moved to an 80 millimeter speedometer and 80 millimeter tachometer. So they're much larger, easier to read, and they have uh, a lot more information that they can tell you. Obviously uh, engine speed as well as road speed. Um, we have a uh, all your typical lights including um, neutral turn indicator high beam. Um, we also have check engine light and a low fuel light. Um, this is not a uh, carbureted motorcycle um, and there is no reserve, so to let you know when you're running out of fuel, we'll have an indicator light on the dash. Lastly, I'll go over uh, dimensions and capacities. The fuel tank has a two gallon capacity. Um, wheelbase is 56 inches and uh, overall length is 86 inches. So we have increased the wheelbase uh, pretty significantly from the 250. Uh, the width is the same as the 250 and the overall wet weight is 360 pounds, so approximately a little less than 100 pounds more than the 250, with a seat height of 29 inches once you're seated on the bike. Well, thank you very much for watching. We are very excited to debut the Halcyon 450, and we are looking forward to uh, answering more of your questions as we uh, launch the motorcycle.